Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 7th of September 2020. I am Aching Brain, I will be your host. We are going to go through our high priority initiatives, our other initiatives, and then blocked items, parking lot, Q&A, that kind of thing. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna find out what is happening in the world of IPFS on this wonderful Monday. So, uh, the first thing to talk about are upcoming and ship releases. Um, I can talk about JSIPFS quickly. We have shipped JSIPFS at 0 0.50, which is incredible. Um, it has a pinning revamp, uh, which is gonna deliver some pretty significant speed improvements uh, when you're pinning things, which you are when you add things. Um, so if you're working on large data sets, you will very much want to upgrade to this. Uh, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, we also have started accepting UN8 arrays as inputs for things, which is really cool. So we've always kind of accepted them in the shape of buffers, but internally they've been converted, um, which is slow um, and annoying. And like the best way to do it is basically to pass buffers as they are, which makes no sense in the browser because buffers aren't a thing. Um, so now everywhere we accepted buffers, we now accept UN8 arrays. The difference is that now we only give you back a UN8 array for things. Um, so this is gonna impact you because if you previously coded to the buffer interface, um, you'll be used to doing things like two string uh, and passing like a base 64 in there. Um, that's not gonna work anymore because we're using uh, just the UN8 array interface. Um, so you need to code to that in the future and your code will run in Node and the browser and Dino and whatever JavaScript takes us next on this crazy journey that we're all on. Um, please code to you in eight arrays. Uh, it also ships with libp 2 p 0.29, uh, which gives us um, signed peer records, gossip sub 1.1 and ED 25519 keys properly, uh, which is great. So please do check it out. Um, I am finishing off the blog post. Um, and that will go live in the next few days. Cool. Um, who can talk about GoIPFS's RC2? Do that. Yeah, so we've got a few bug fixes that we're slating. Uh, we're gonna do our second RC for the 0.7 release this week. Uh, I believe that should be the last RC, and then we will throw 0.7 over the fence next week for everyone to consume. Um, in addition to the SecIO deprecation, there's lots of extra good stuff in there. So I think we have a meetup later this week to talk about it. So be there. Super cool, super exciting. Uh, next up is the pinning services. Yep, uh, so we got uh, two discussions on the cosmetic API spec changes. One is about clarifying the way we expect error. Uh, responses to look like and the second one is uh, being very specific how a name filter works namely that it's like partial match and it's case insensitive I think that's the latest uh, consensus um, and we are having a meeting tomorrow to uh, go over uh, integration between go IPFS pinning API integration client and I believe the way web UI will uh, consume that as that will be the first user of that API cool I get the feeling I should put together some kind of JS implementation of the uh, spec as well that would be quite cool yeah so for the um, client, I think Adin ended up generating using some like the, the Swagger because they have the open API generators. So he just generated the client um, and then created an adapter on top of that to abstract out that. So and there are some pretty, pretty decent generators for, um, th for JS as well. And I think there's like a nice, pretty decent like Prism test client that mocks it out, but yeah. Be good to do. Yeah, that approach makes a lot of sense. Cool. Uh, moving on. ED25519 keys. Yeah, no update on those. Uh, it's still on track to land in Go IPFS 7 next week. Um, same thing with SecIO removal. Um, nothing new there. It's happening. It's coming. 
So we'll also need to like I need I'll, I'll open up a PR this week to actually remove that from um, from JS so we can launch that in the next release. Awesome. Uh, next thing on the list is the Rust IPFS initiative, week thirty-seven in Big Brother House. Yeah. Uh... Um, well, first off, there was a really great community contribution that landed. Um, a lot of you probably know Rudiger from Actix um, contributed the DNS lookup so we can resolve our, uh, domains now from within Rust IPFS, which is really cool. Um, but apart from that, we just finished a pretty big cycle of work, which lands us pinning DHT DNS and uh, a very rudimentary file system store for blocks based on multi hashes, which is really cool. So uh, we're catching up and um, the performance of the Rust IPFS is admittedly slightly slower than, but comparable to the Go implementation of adding large data sets and things like that. So that's where we're at. It was awesome. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys use to just use the Go implementation for the for DHT? Did you guys have to just dive through the the code for that, or? Um, no, we, we. I mean, like a lot of the IPFS stuff, we just implement whatever implementation of lib P2P is on the ecosystem. So we've um, just kind of wired up the Rust lib P2P Kademlia and and all that stuff, so. The okay, one thing cool. I'm missing is AutoNAT. So DHT publishing is like, eh, we're, not, <laughs> we're not really sure if we're actually publishing anything because we're not doing any NAT punching, uh, but there's a PR in place for that in the P2P, so we're just kind of waiting around for that. Nice. Yeah. I guess it'd be good to get it onto test ground somehow and see how I'm it I'm hoping that if uh, people want to catch up and, and talk about that. That'd be cool. That would be rad. Uh, next item on the list is JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so uh, for the first part, the outer relay, I got back to, to it last week. It, I basically finished the review that uh, Jacob provided me uh, a while ago. And uh, I uh, added some other stuff that uh, I intended to add, but uh, for the first uh, uh, cycle of feedback, I didn't finish it. So it's now the first iteration. It's ready for review. Jacob will hopefully review it this week. Uh, and yeah, so the next uh, iteration on the auto relay will basically include what is missing, which is uh, updating the network when uh, appear multi other changes so that we propagate uh, that information to all the other peers. And uh, also to find remote relays in the network. While basically now you will uh, connect to a peer and if the peer uh, has the relay protocol and also supports OP, you will basically add it as auto relay according to the limits that you can configure before. Uh, but yeah, but the goal is to also try to find uh, relays if you are not connected to them. Uh, regarding uh, the connection manager overall, uh, I spent the, the end of last week and to, today's morning uh, basically finishing uh, an epic issue which contains basically uh, six different milestones of all the work that I think we need to do regarding the connection manager overall. Uh, the big goals here are basically to uh, align with the rendezvous and the auto relay work. And uh, we need to the connection manager to be more intelligent so that we, for example, don't close a connection that we have with the uh, auto relay node that we are buying to and all other uh, kind of similar flows. And also this is really important for uh, the DHT that should uh, be our work after this. And so, yeah, I think the connection manager will be a big thing for the next couple of releases. So the, the first three milestones that uh, I created are the ones that I think we will need to tackle first, hopefully for the next release, which basically are to improve the watermark observations. We currently have basically a naive implementation where if we are getting to the maximum threshold, we just disconnect from 
uh, appear without any like kind of uh, knowledge. For example, we should check if uh, the peer that we are going to disconnect uh, has running protocols that we want, or it's basically a peer that we are connected to, or it's not net worth and other kind of uh, uh, characteristics that you should we should check. And I have kind of described them in the milestones if you want to check it. And then we also need to uh, guarantee that the connections that we want to uh, are kept alive, which is not uh, a thing right now. And also another thing that uh, uh, go already has that we should have is basically to protect connections, which is kind of what I talked about before, that we need to protect the connections on the peers that we really rely on. Other example uh, would be if we want to be attached with a, a circuit relay node, we need to guarantee that this connection will not be closed. And yeah, it's pretty much that. And I will start working on this epic this week. Yeah, I'll get feedback. Um, make sure I get feedback on both of those tomorrow. That's awesome. Um, that is it for the uh, high priority initiatives. So moving on to the other initiatives, uh, anything on the subdomain gateway? Um, it's in support for IPNS names uh, with those short value keys scheduled to land with 0.7 and it's mostly uh, we are waiting for that for uh, blog post and because uh, uh, like if, if we post a blog post then uh, we expect uh, partners like Cloudflare to also support that and it takes, takes time to trickle down all those updates so it will be a few weeks before that lands but that's the only remaining part i think cool uh there's been no update on unix of sv 1.5 in car if you as far as i know uh moving on to the pinning system rebound that is shipped totally shipped poop poop all aboard it is shipped um which is awesome uh, no, Iraqli, so um, I'd imagine there's no update on the DAX service or improving the web UI file app. Um, I can give, give a quick update on uh, web UI uh, uh, file add. Uh, the need for buffering entire thing before you import it over HTTP API, that patch by Iraqli landed and it's scheduled to be released with web UI 2.11 hopefully this week. Uh, additional improvements around progress reporting will land in the next release. Cool. Uh, that's it for the um, other initiatives. Um, does anybody have anything they want to propose for a design review? Cool. Any blockers and asks? I'm sort of blocked on uh, the, um, so we do like uh, user agent sniffing on um, all requests that come in via the HTTP API. And I wanna switch uh, the Electron renderer to use native uh, fetch instead of the, the port of the node HTTP module. So it needs a, an update to the um, Go IPFS uh, check on the uh, user agent, which I've PR'd and Nadine has just merged and hopefully that's gonna get out in the next RC. So it will be a 0.7, which will be radical because it will neatly halve the um, time it takes to run electron tests in CI because they are really, really slow. Um, so I'm sort of blocked, but that's actually just started moving in the last hour or so. So that's actually quite cool. Uh, anyone else got a blocker? Got any, any any blockages that need unblocking? No, it's not funny, Jacob. Cool. Uh, any questions? Anything for the parking lot? All right, that's amazing. This has been the uh, RPS Core Implementations Weekly Sync uh, for Monday, September the 7th, 2020. 
uh, please fill in your async updates for review uh, and have a nice time on the internet. Um, stay safe, don't touch your face. Just because we're bored of coronavirus doesn't mean it's over. Uh, see you all in the future. Bye. Bye. Bye.